Hello everyone and welcome back to Raise Aerospace and Kerbal Space Program 2 where I need to rebuild the space shuttle as well as the Sakura circumnavigation plane because the old craft files are not reliable and I need to flight test them both. I wasn't particularly good at landing either one in the previous version and we need to make sure that I can land them. So we're just gonna do flight tests on the runway. I've already built the uh, Sakura uh, from scratch. Of course it's not gonna be exactly the same as it was in the previous version. So we'll see how that works out and whether I've done it right. But I decided that I would show the building of the space shuttle since that's always of interest. And so we're going to not have it be pink. That was for the Sakura. Um, and restore agents. Uh, oh, well now they're all agency colors. Um, well, we basically want the color to be white. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, sort of a suitably creamy white anyway. Okay, so that's fine. And we are going to have a nose cone. And... For reasons I don't and that actually needs to be black. Oh, actually it's gray. But for reasons I don't understand, um, no, the accent also needs to be gray. Uh, they they have it so that it just quite it doesn't quite fit the curvature of the space shuttle. So I always have to tuck it in just a little bit. Uh, I don't like the edges, like so. All right. So something like that. We'll just go with a single cargo bay like that. It could be longer if you want it longer. Uh, another option is to have the section that has the docking point arrangement have a separate bit. And then it's like that. Maybe I'll go with that. Uh, but the door is... Well, they'll open all at the same time anyway, so it won't look too bad. I think we'll go with a uh, five-segment cargo bay this time. Uh, there's no particular reason, it could go either way, but it'll make this subtly different, so that's okay. And then we need a fuel tank, and we want a monopropellant tank this time. And that's pretty good, but we want two of them. And we are going to have the mount for the engines. So engine mount large. And that I forget if that has the three nodes for the three engines. So I generally use the vectors for this because they are replicas of the SSMEs. Oh, it doesn't have the three nodes for the three engines. Okay, so we have one engine on top. So snap. Two engines on the side. Uh, avoid that. Okay, and then we tweak them. F to change from local to global orientation. And the shell engine should be tilted by about 10 degrees. So uh, we are going to hold down shift and we're going to have the snap on holding down shift for five degree increments and then two of those. Ah, I rerouted because three used to be the thing for rotation. And two. Ah, not three. Two. I think two notches should be 10 degrees. Anyway, I think we'll go with that for now. Now, the question is the wings. The wings are sort of a toss-up as far as which ones we use. Now, in the previous versions, I had trouble with them staying on. Uh, I think we'll go with medium, but it's tough to get them looking right. It needs to be as low a span as possible but then we can't get it as far back now if we use the small ones that's fine but the small ones may be less stable small ones work better for the look of it because we can reduce the span without hitting the bottom end of that and then the wing angle thing works better and so you get a better wing like that so the space shuttle's root looks a lot more like that, though the control surface would need to be changed. But the way I did it in the previous version to solve the problem was to just tuck the wing underneath a bit. So instead of mounting it here, which is natural, mount it lower. But that causes other problems for the center of lift. Okay, so these are the numbers that I have for the medium wing right now. 
and we'll see whether that needs to be changed or not. I don't know if the medium wing needs to have its controls reversed or something like that either. We'll check that out. And then the outer wing. We will also have medium. We'll strut all of it. We gotta make the tip thickness on the inner bit a little bit thicker. Wonder if that has any actual effect as far as the strength of the wing. Not sure. And the outer bit probably needs to be tilted a little bit. Okay, something like that should be fine, though. I think we want... We will want it to go with a black color, probably preferentially. Uh, this is for heat tolerance. You know, the, the look of the heat tiles. So, even though... Oops. Even though it covers more of the surface than I want to, I think that's for probably for the best. But the center of uh, lift is all the way up here. But we are going to put body flaps there. Hopefully that'll pull it back. So, control surface medium. Maybe we should put it like that first. Okay, I think these will be good numbers. Let's move it and then place it. It won't actuate exactly the way it ought to, probably. Uh, that's a rather big. A little bit too big. Okay. So let's take a look at what happens if we have very little mop propellant in the back. Let's say just 0.6 tons in the forward tank and then none in the back tank. Well, I'm going to put in the forward docking port arrangement and see if that helps with the balance. Onto the little radial attachment point. But the idea was that we would have this, oops, we would have this cabin so that we could get the full crew complement of the shuttle. And also if they do the IVA the same way that was before, you could look out that window and see the cargo bay. This was thought up, as far as I know, by Das Valdez on Twitch. And we'd have the Mark II docking port on top, but uh, we can just put a regular docking port right now. Need to make sure that it doesn't clip the cargo bay, but still has enough clearance to dock. I had put the extra RCS tanks on here. And maybe we can put one on top, I don't know if we can radially attach those. Okay, we've got a... Mop propellant tank there. I could avoid clipping it in. And we should have some extra batteries. Even though power consumption is sort of a question mark these days. So we could put them right alongside there. Okay. Well, now we're getting closer still, but it's not quite right. The problem is that we have more wingage up front here. And I'll try to reduce that. But it does make the look of it a little bit worse. Also, we have to be careful about the wing getting into the cargo bay. Right now, it is, and that means that we might want to offset it down a bit. So it doesn't interfere with cargo. Okay, I've adjusted the body flap a little bit. Tighten it up. It's getting awful close though. So we'll leave that be. So we have the fuel in that tank here, 0.6. And we have the fuel in this tank here, 0.6. Now if it's fully fueled, it's definitely not going to be flight worthy. So uh, it hasn't adjusted. There we go. So that's not good. So it can't come back down directly like that. It'll flip out of control. So keep that in mind. But anyway, we are going to move on to making the vertical stabilizer. So this is how that looks. No idea whether it'll work right or not. We are certainly, for the flight test, we're not going to have that full or this full. 
we'll just have it at 0.6. And reset. Okay. Now I'll have the vertical stabilizer in two pieces. First one, very, very, very short, and sort of going straight. And then the second part, right on top of it, uh, we should probably increase the root and the tip thickness. We'll have to tweak that. If it's not in line, it's going to have an adverse yaw. And that one. Increase the span, decrease the tip length, and sweep it back. Not that high. Maybe a little bit more tip. Uh, a little bit less. Okay, that should be the right idea there. And the bottom bit, we don't want any sort of um, control. I guess we can just use the wrench for that. Got a lot of wrenches here. No control surface. On the top bit, it should only do yaw. These guys only do pitch. This inner one is way too big right now. Uh, so let's use the wrench first. First of all, it is not going to be the whole span, and we've got to put it on the outside bit so it's not clipping into the body. And its length is going to be much shorter. And it will only do pitch. On the outside, we'll try to match that. Like that. It'll be the full span. And we will allow it to do pitch and roll, not yaw. Okay. Well, last thing is the landing gear. And then we'll have the jet engines. But we have to make sure that the jet engines do not move the center of mass at all. So, medium landing gear. Open the nose. Well, we'll use medium landing gear throughout. The shell has it very far on the nose. Maybe even further... Really only want to use the medium landing gear, but... Because that'll look right. But then the heavy landing gear... Might be more advisable. So, obviously the right symmetry, and it has to be behind the center mass. I always attach the landing gear to the body, and then tweak it out. I don't know if that'll interfere with the wings or not. If we have the wings falling off, I'll consider just attaching them to the wings and seeing if that'll help. Since we are doing a flight test, we have to rotate off the runway, which means that this has to be fairly close to the center of mass to work. But we want it far out, but not probably that far out. And that is because we don't want to wiggle around on the runway so much. And we'll also strut the wings. And I'll put two struts each on that. Um, we'll also strut the outer wing to the inner wing just a little bit. Get the methane fuel tank. We don't need very long. So that's where that is. But the actual engines are going to pull the center of mass back, so we'll put this a little bit further forward. We'll use the whip lashes. Oh, maybe they didn't move it very far forward after all. Let's see. Oh, that seems like it's still forward, so let me back a little bit. Oh, we haven't put the OMS pods. That's not, they're not going to be very heavy, but yeah, we need to do that. I like to put the intakes like that. 
Okay, so the OMS pods are made with the small to tiny adapters. We don't put the fuel into the adapters because they'll be the wrong fuel for everything. And I'll just put them like that. They are not supposed to be black like that. They would have some tiles, but mostly they're white. And we haven't put the RCS, but I'll leave that off for now for the flight test. The RCS won't have that much mass. Again, F to change to local orientation instead of global. And then a little nose cone. And some tweaking of the nose cone is necessary. I think we'll just leave that be. And then our OMS engines, the most appropriate engine for the job, is just the puff. The goal of the puffs is to point through the center of mass. That's okay for now. We can tweak it if uh, in orbit we see that it needs a better balance. Right now the center of mass and center lift are really close to each other. We'll have to check out on the runway to see how that works out for us. Nothing has fallen apart yet. So that's a positive. Again, the shuttle didn't actually need to take off from a runway. But it's a nice feature if you can get it. Well, uh, even at 75 we seem to be able to take off. It does have a huge wing after all. Maybe a little bit too big a wing. I think I overdid the wing a bit. Okay, I'm gonna turn the vectoring off of these. Because that's messing with my examination of the control surfaces. But it looks like all the control surfaces are doing what they're supposed to. We don't have to invert. Also in this version I noticed that there's a lot less of the roll-yaw coupling that we had in previous versions. So flight dynamics have improved, I would say. It's not going very fast, but then that's hardly a surprise. In fact, we want this shuttle to be sort of draggy. I'm still not entirely sure I want the extra segment on the cargo bay. I'm thinking about that. I'll get a viewer response. Uh, do you think that the cargo bay should just be the four segment version or to uh, go with the five segment version? This way we can have the docking port and a full like Rockamax tank, you know, the old orange tank in there. But, you know. The vertical stabilizer might be need to be a touch taller. I guess the real test of whether the wings are going to fall off will be during re-entry. These are not speeds that they would fall off at anyway. But maybe when we test the Sakura, we'll get a better sense of that since it will be going fast. And through fairly thick atmosphere. Yeah, control is fairly tame in this version compared to some of what I saw in previous versions. Much better. Okay, gear down. Okay, cutting engines. I should have a, had a shutdown on that. Okay. But presumably we're not producing enough thrust for it to matter. But we still have plenty of drag. Maybe too much to get to the threshold like this. I should have aimed for the center like I did in the old versions. But we're still above the takeoff speed. And there's the 20 degree angle that the shuttle normally approached at. Uh, maybe too early. Okay, uh, still too early. 
Eek. All right. Well, fairly slow on landing. Again, I don't feel a need to have a drag chute because it lands so slow. Yeah, I, I think uh, tentatively we'll keep this. Let's recover. In another video, I'll attach it to the stack and we'll test it in uh, launch. But we'll take the jet engines off for now. Okay, now we'll test the Sakura. So this is how I have the Sakura in here right now, the center of lift much further back, so it's a bit nose heavy potentially, but we'll see how it goes. Obviously it has overwhelming power. We're not going to go all the way around the world or try that just yet. I just need to practice the landing. So um, we'll, we'll do the landing test with the full fuel though, to see if that's possible. After all, it is a regular plane. I wish we had a fuel dump valve, but anyway, we'll try it. So now we've made some design choices here. Down here we have the transition, so that's a uh, stabilizer. But out here we're using the metamorph, so the medium wing. You'll see the relative balance of that, and these are the transitions as well. It all depends on drag. Will the wings be better on the outboard, or should we have the stabilizers on the outboard? Which one produces more drag? I don't know yet. And of course it could have changed based on previous versions. No, I mean compared to previous versions. Pitch authority is lacking right now. Well, it's because these middle ones, we shouldn't have, it, have them do pitch. I forgot to tell them not to. There we go. But at that speed, let's try that again. Let me uh, revert to the VAB and make sure to turn off pitch on those. We probably don't need them to be so big, the control surface part anyway. Since they're not doing so much. They just roll. A little bit off, I would like roll closer to the center mass, but... I don't, I don't like the look of having the wing piece forward of the engines, but maybe we'll have to do that. Maybe we'll have to shift those up, as bad as that might look, or have a forward swept wing, which may or may not be worse. Just checking the takeoff speed. 140 to 150 right now. So at the moment we're not expecting to land any better than that. Fast landing. Tough. Anyway, so now the challenge. It really doesn't turn very quickly. <laughs> uh, the challenge is whether I can land this safely when it's full of fuel. It's not pulling up very well right now. I've maxed out the pitch I'm trying to pull up. It's rough when the shuttle is better at flying than this plane. I wish the runways were more visible at a greater distance. Because this thing is gone neat. Oh, now they've sort of rendered. We sort of have an idea where they are, but this thing needs to line up way ahead of time. Because <laughs> it doesn't turn that quickly. I swear I have anti-aliasing on. But I think it's just too nose heavy right now. It doesn't want to pull up ever. I don't think it's going to be safe to land it, but uh, as far as the gear extension speed, there is potentially a maximum gear extension speed. Of course, right there we were very close to the speed of sound, so it's not entirely a surprise that things would report. But okay, well, we won't kill Jeb yet. Okay, but I think it's just way too nose heavy. That's about as much as we can suit them forward though. We might just have to scooch them forward. And just accept that that's how it's gonna be. Moving them out creates more drag. Maybe just go extreme with it? 
dynamically it seems better. It's weird, but it might work better, so we'll try it. I mean, it was weird to begin with anyway, so no problem making it weirder. It's got big shoulders. It takes off at a much lower speed now, because it's not as nose heavy. Turns better, I think. Well, let's see its low speed dynamics. It's all well and good when it's got all of its thrust going. Well, I've got zero engine power now. Doesn't like to dump speed, actually. Yeah, I think I want some engine power here. You should be good to extend the gear now, right? And previously we took off at this speed. Still not what I describe as a great plane to handle. And it might need the drag chute. In fact, instead of the nose cone in the tail, maybe we could put a chute there. Oh, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Stay on the runway. I'm not applying the brakes yet because I'm afraid it'll go out of control. Now I'm applying brakes. Oh, 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 oh. Careful. Okay, we brought it back in one piece on the brakes. Alright, and that's with full fuel, so it'll fly better, hopefully, when it's more empty. But Jeb will be safe on the around-the-world flight if we have Jeb on, or whichever Kerbal we put on. So that was the flight test of the Space Shuttle and the Sakura. The Sakura looks substantially different than it did in the previous version, but I feel like this might be better. We'll see. I mean, the question is whether it'll make it around the world. And we'll find that out in a later video. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.